A Boy Called Bat. Chapter five, a tiny pink nose. Mom set the box on the kitchen table. Is it sleeping? Bat asked, his voice a whisper. Probably, Mom said. Babies sleep most of the time. What is it? Janie asked. Bat, do you want to open the lid? Bat didn't answer. He was too excited. Very carefully, he lifted the lid of the box and peered inside. Janie stood behind him, breathing on his ear. You're breathing on my ear, Bat said. Janie ignored him. It's just a bunch of rags, she said. Mom walked around to the far side of the round table and reached into the box. She scooped up the pile of material and sat down. Look, Bat watched as Mom shift the towel in her arms. A nose peeked out, a tiny pink nose, and then two slanted closed eyes, a forehead covered in downy fuzz, little ears still curled tight against his head. Janie began, is that a, it's a kit, Bat said, enchanted by the tiny creature, wanting so badly to hold it. A baby skunk. Oh, mom, Janie said, I can't believe you brought home a skunk. I had to, mom said, rubbing the skunk's little forehead with her thumb. He's an orphan. Oh, breathed Jamie. She leaned in closer, blocking Bat's view. How old is he? You're in my way, Bat said loudly. He pushed Janie's arm to make room for himself. Bat, Mom said, you need to stay calm around the skunk kit, okay? If you, you don't want to scare him. Bat did not want to scare the skunk kit. He wanted to hold the skunk kit, maybe even feed and care for the skunk kit. But his sister was standing in his way. Move, Janie, he hissed at her as quietly as he could. Why don't you both sit down, Mom said. I'll tell you all about him. Janie plopped down into the chair on Mom's right. So Bat went around to help her on the other side and sat in the chair on her left. He scooted the chair as close to Mom as he could. The kit was still tucked into the towel, only his tiny little face visible. Eyes closed, he opened his mouth in a yawn, his tiny pink tongue arching out. Mom said, Bat, do you remember when we smelled that skunk on the way to school this morning? Bat did remember. They had smelled it just after they'd pulled off their street, Plum Lane, onto Anderson Road. He had smelled it, and Mom had smelled it too. Bat craned his neck, looking out each window carefully. He'd seen lots of people on bicycles. They lived near college, and the students mostly rode bikes to class. And he'd seen other cars, and some people on foot. It was the beginning of spring. But it was still cold, so he had seen lots of hats and scarves. He'd seen an American flag on a flagpole in front of the post office. He'd seen a red bus. He'd seen a sign that read, Welcome to Quincy, a bike-friendly town. But he had not seen a skunk. Bat nodded. I remember, he said. Well, unfortunately, the skunk we smelled but didn't see was the mama skunk. A car hit her and a couple of college students brought her to my office in the basket of a bike. She was there waiting for me after I dropped you off at school, injured and very pregnant. Is she okay? Janie asked. I wish I could say she is, Mom answered. I wasn't able to save the mother or the other baby kits. Only this one lived. I was able to check the mother for diseases though, and luckily she wasn't sick, which is a good sign the kit isn't sick either. That's awesome, Bat said. Bat, Janie said loud and sharp. The kit twitched and shifted, scared by Janie's voice. How can you say it's awesome? The mom died. The other babies died. Bat didn't mean it, that it was awesome that the other skunks had died. Of course that wasn't awesome. He'd meant that it was awesome that this kit had lived. But it wasn't worth it to try to explain to Janie what he'd meant. She usually misunderstood Bat. Most everyone did. Can I? Bat reached out for the kit, wanting so badly to hold him that his fingers twitched. We can't keep him, Mom warned. There's a wild animal rescue center that we can give him to in about a month, but they're too busy to take him just yet. So we can help 
Get him bigger and stronger before we hand him over to the experts. They'll raise him until he's ready to be released into the wild, when he's about five months old. Then she passed the tiny kit, wrapped in towels, into Bat's arms. The kit was so small that Bat couldn't even tell he was in the towel, except for the tiny face that peeked out. He cradled the bundle in his arms. He felt his face stretch into a wide smile, so wide it made his cheeks sore. Chapter 6, Skunk Lunch Can it spray yet? Mom, Janie asked. No, Mom answered. Soon he will be able to. But when skunks are babies, they can't spray as strongly as the adults. Bat realized he didn't know a lot about skunks. He knew they sprayed a stinky smell to protect themselves. And he knew they were mammals. And he knew they were omnivores because they ate bugs and smaller animals and plants too. But he didn't know very much more than that. He decided to learn everything about skunks. What are we going to feed him? Bat asked. Can I do it? He's too little to eat yet, so we need to feed him formula. They don't make skunk formula, so we use puppy formula. It's the closest thing to mother skunk milk. Janie stood up. It's a cute skunk, Mom, but I want to go over to Ezra's house, okay? Okay, Mom said. Be back in an hour. Ezra lived three houses up the block and had been Janie's best friend since before Bat was born. Janie loved Ezra. She thought he was funny and smart and creative. Bat didn't love Ezra. He thought Ezra was loud and annoying and a mean tease. Sometimes when Janie went to play at Ezra's house, it bothered Bat when he was, wasn't invited. And that there wasn't a house he was invited to visit where Janie didn't go. But right now, he didn't care about Ezra or about anything other than feeding a skunk. Goodbye, he said to Janie without taking his eyes off the baby skunk's tiny face. The skunk was yawning and licking his lips with the world's tiniest, pinkest tongue. Janie left. Mom said, okay, Bat, sit right here and I'll get the formula. She went to her bag and pulled out a can, like a soda can, but with a picture of a puppy on it. Mom shook it and cracked it open and dipped a syringe inside, pulling up the plunger. Bat watched it fill with a thick white liquid. We only give him a few drops at a time, Mom said, carrying the full syringe back over to the table. Watch me do it first. She took the skunk and arranged him on her lap, one hand over his back and under his front legs to hold him upright the other hand aiming the syringe full of formula at his mouth. The skunk seemed to know what was about to happen and twitched his little pink nose back and forth eager, eagerly. Mom slowly pushed down on the plunger and Bat watched a thick white droplet of puppy formula push through the hole at the end of the syringe. The skunk tipped back his chin and opened his mouth, licking it eagerly. What a good little baby! Mom crooned, pressing more formula into his mouth. I want to feed him. Let me feed him. I want to feed him, Bat said. Okay, okay. Mom handed the skunk back to Bat. He tried to hold the skunk the way Mom had and then took the syringe in his other hand. Very slowly, Mom warned him. And finally, it was Bat's turn. As slowly as he could, he pressed down on the plunger, aiming the syringe tip at the baby skunk's mouth. And it worked! The skunk's little pink tongue laughed at the formula. Droplets gathered at the corners of his mouth, and some ran down his chin onto the towel, but most of it made it into the baby skunk. I'm doing it, Bat whispered. I'm feeding him. You sure are, Mom said. Bat knew he was doing a messier job of it than Mom had done. But the baby skunk didn't seem to mind. I love him, Bat said. He hadn't mean to say it out loud. Mom laughed. Careful or you might make me jealous, she said. But it's true, Bat said. I love him. Mom said they'd have to hand over the kit to the rescue center in a month. But Bat, holding the tiny animal in his arms, made a silent promise that he'd figure out a way to keep him. 
chapter seven, every other Fridays. The next morning was an every other Friday. On every other Fridays, mom drove Matt to his school and Janie walked to her school, just like usual. But in the afternoon, dad would pick them up. First, Matt, whose class let out 20 minutes before Janie's, and they would all go to home to his apartment for the weekend. Every other Friday's map made Bat uncomfortable, like his skin was on too tight. Bat liked it when things followed a pattern, and every other Friday's broke the pattern. This every other Friday was the worst one Bat had ever experienced, because it meant there would be three days until he saw the skunk kit again. He begged mom to let him take the skunk to dad's house, but mom refused. The baby skunk needs to be with me, she said. I'll take him to work and the vet techs can watch him while I'm with patients. Besides that, I don't think your dad is a fan of skunks. Bat even tried pretending to be sick so that he could stay home instead of going to school. He told mom that he had a sore throat and mom's patients and achy ears. Bat hardly ever lied. It made him feel itchy. But even though mom's patients were animals rather than humans, she was still a kind of doctor. She shined the light into his ears and made him say, ah, as she looked down his throat. You're not sick, Bat, she said. You just want to stay home with the skunk kid. He needs me, Bat whined. Bat, Mom warned, don't let yourself get worked up all day, okay? Sorry, sorry, said Bat. We can help raise the kids this month as a family, as long as you keep on doing the regular stuff, too. School and dads and homework and everything. If the skunk kit is too big of a distraction, then I can get Lawrence to take him home in the evenings. Lawrence was Bat's favorite vet tech at Mom's clinic. He could juggle five juggling clubs, and even though he had enormous hands, big enough to hold all five clubs at once, he was gentle. He had the deepest voice Bat had ever heard. Deep like space. But no matter how much Bat liked Lawrence, there was no way he was going to let him take the kit home after work. My throat feels better, he said. Much better. Mom and Janie and Bat all left the house together. Mom locked the door behind them. She kissed Janie and said, look both ways. Have a fun weekend. Okay, Mom, said Janie. See you on Monday. Bat climbed into the back seat of the car and fastened his seatbelt. He liked to sit in the middle seat because someone had once told him that it was the safest seat in the whole car. That was one of the things he didn't like about every, every other Fridays. His dad's car, a fast little yellow convertible, didn't have a middle back seat. It just had two side back seats with a hump in between. Mom placed the box with the skunk kit on the fat front passenger side. Then she started the car and backed down the driveway. It wasn't a long drive to Bat's school. The distance from their house to his school was exactly 2.3 miles. Bat knew this because he liked his mother to push the button on the dashboard each morning, the one that reset the trip meter. Bat spent the entire 2.3 miles trying to come up with a reason why he shouldn't go to Dad's, even though it wasn't every other Friday, a reason that wouldn't make his mom give the kit to Lawrence. But he couldn't think of anything. They arrived at his school. You'll take care of the kit, Bat asked Bob. Honey, Mom said, I'm a veterinarian. Taking care of animals is my job. I promise. Bat nodded. He unbuckled his seatbelt, slid across the back seat, and got out of the car. Wait a minute, Mom called after him through her roll-down window. Aren't you forgetting something? He had his backpack, his lunch, his earmuffs. No, he said. Mom smiled. You forgot to kiss me goodbye. Oh yeah, Bat walked back over to the car, stuck his head, and stuck his head through Mom's window. She wrapped her arms around his neck and pulled him close. Her wavy brown hair tickled his nose. Goodbye, little Bat. I'll miss you. Then she kissed his cheek. Goodbye, Bat answered. He walked up to the school's front door, then turned around. Mom was still there in her car, watching him. He raised his hand and waved. Mom honked the horn at him. Three light happy